Hi everybody. Um, I'm going to start a new thing here um, for uh, these times when I'm I'm really busy uh, as kind of a video blog, I guess, um, but a little more structured than me just ranting. Um, I, I'm going to give some tips and tricks here, and uh, when I get busy like this, like I am now, uh, I'm going to try and do a couple of these. Uh, they, they shouldn't be as hard as actually planning out a lesson, so I should be able to do some of these in the meantime. Uh, anyways, the the first thing I want to show uh, this this actually came up in, in the current job I'm working with here. Um, I am not the designer of this job; I'm strictly the developer. Uh, so I have to work with the elements that the designer gives me. In this case. I was given this uh, box here. It's a it's a background uh, for an item on on this project here. We take a closer look. This is a pretty simple element here. I mean, it's got a slight drop shadow or inner shadow, sorry, in in the upper left here, and dual borders around it. So the reason I bring this up, the the task I had, uh, we were originally using this, and then we decided, we, well, we need a bigger version of this. And I wasn't uh, given the PSD or the original Photoshop document that made this particular um, graphic here. So all I had was this PNG. So I had to come up with some options on, on how I was going to go about it. Now, it's not a difficult thing to do, necessarily but there are ways to kind of take shortcuts or speed up the process um, ultimately we you know worst case scenario we would recreate this box which to an experienced person a uh, graphic designer that is uh, it wouldn't take too long not, not long at all however when you're working on a project that's you know several hundred hours worth of um, you know labor Cutting two minutes down to 30 seconds uh, helps. A little bit helps. So, what I'm going to show you is how to make this box bigger without having to recreate it or stretch it. Um, and if you're if you're not totally familiar, if you're still kind of a beginner with Photoshop and, and graphic design in general, making something bigger by just stretching it. I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time does not make it look any better, that's for sure. It usually pixelates it or um, just distorts it and looks like crap. Okay, so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to show, uh, for those of you who aren't uh, experts here, just uh, what I mean by the distortion. Uh, really quick, I'm going to flip over here to our trusty Dreamweaver here and I'm not expecting uh, if you're not familiar with Dreamweaver uh, this is more just a, an example so uh, I'm not teaching Dreamweaver right now um, I'm gonna make a new document and I'm just going to toss this box here in the document and we'll go ahead and save it Um, so, normally I don't use the design view here in Dreamweaver, but just for the example, I'm going to go ahead and make this box bigger. Um, just really any amount here. And I'm going to save this. And you can already tell probably by just looking at it uh, that it doesn't look good. But here you go. So this is an example of what happens when you try to enlarge it uh, using the using HTML um, you'll actually probably get a worse result in HTML than you would enlarging it in Photoshop because Photoshop actually has some 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 intelligent um, math behind their enlarging whereas the browser eh, it's not an image editor it does what it can but uh, fails. So, 
Likewise, if we did it in here, if I go to image, image size, and we say we increase this by 300%, say OK. It's, it's pretty similar result here. It's pixelated and, and blurry. And before it was, uh, if I undo this, it's a nice crisp box here. Okay, so like I said, the worst case scenario is we would have to rebuild this box from scratch, which means we would need to get this color code here, um, make sure we've got the same color for the, the light gray. We would need to add a layer style that put a border around it uh, and then also add this drop shadow and get it just right or uh, sorry again enter shadow uh, but then you also notice there's a second uh, uh, border here which makes it even a little more difficult so that just seems like a lot of hassle to me so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make our canvas a little bit bigger so we'll go to image, canvas size, and I'll we'll switch this to percent. I don't remember what the actual size I needed to make it for that particular project was, so we'll just make up a size. Um, and I don't believe it was much bigger, so we'll just go with 150%. And what I'm going to do is uh, anchor it to the top left here, and that's going to save even more time. It's just one less step we need to do, and you'll understand here once we get started. So say OK. Let's zoom in a little bit, get it to full screen, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my square marquee tool, which uh, is the M key, if you want to know your shortcuts, and I'm going to do the first couple of parts of this uh, slow and explain what I'm doing, and then I'm going to go really fast and, and just finish it up. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to get this corner here. Uh, so I'm going to highlight, or uh, sorry, put my marquee selection around. Uh, it really doesn't matter how far we go. I just want to make sure I get both this uh, top and bottom corner. And what I'm going to do is hold down Control to cut and hold down Shift to keep it in line and just move it on over here. There we go. So now we have our, our top right corner. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this bottom here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hold down control and drag it down. And there you go. So now we have our corners done. Uh, now keep in mind we have this inner shadow. So that's important to, to stay true to. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight a big chunk here. And instead of uh, cutting, I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to hold down Control and Alt, click and drag while holding Shift. And I'm going to let go. And then I'm going to do it again. There you go. So now we have our whole left side taken care of. Let's do the same concept over here on uh, the right side. Let's get a large chunk here. Make sure you go all the way down to the bottom. And let's go ahead and hold down Control, Alt, click and drag. And while, while dragging, you can hold down Shift to keep it in line. And there we go. And then let's do this with the side here. And actually get a larger chunk. And Control, Alt, and drag and shift and there you go we have a larger box it's crisp and stays true to what it what it originally was uh, supposed to look like so that's your quick Photoshop tip and for the second part of this uh, first tips and tricks uh, video I'm gonna kind of take a little trip around the web here and show you uh, some of the resources I use uh, almost probably on a daily basis when making websites, doing graphic design, whatever. Uh, I'm going to try and go through as many as I can within the remaining time. So 
one of the first ones off the top of my head for any PHP issues I might be having. Um, sometimes it's uh, you, you forget uh, one, a pre-built function. For instance, the date function. Uh, often I forget the the codes, the little key uh, characters to format the date. So many times I need to refer to this this resource and and if you're into PHP you probably already know but PHP the people who developed PHP have a great uh, manual on their website so we'll go to Google here and we'll type in PHP date function and php.net is the resource and usually if you put PHP behind whatever your uh, search is uh, they will come up first, uh, unless your whatever you're searching for isn't is off or something. But so let's go ahead and click on that. And there's just a wealth of knowledge on this uh, PHP.net. So for instance, here's all these codes that I I was forgetting. Um, you know, often I forget whether something needs to be a lowercase i or an uppercase i or you know things like that. So that's one of them similar to this is uh, MySQL or MySQL. I usually find myself in the same predicament, um, actually identical. I, I always forget the date and time codes for, for MySQL. So using the same kind of concept here, let's just type in date and here you go. MySQL.com or dev.mysql.com great documentation here so if I click on here I can easily go down here to the I think it's a date format here it is and here's all my codes so that's another great resource for uh, uh, web development using either PHP or MySQL the uh, next resource I want to show you is uh, I, I use this all the time uh, in in my office. Uh, I have these posted everywhere, and I gave uh, I've given every team member a uh, copy of of many of these uh, cheat sheets. Um, the website I believe is addedbytes.com. Yeah, that's it. So if I click here. Um, Dave, I don't, I don't remember his full name, but he's he's got great, great, uh, great resources all over the place in here. And uh, but more than anything, uh, if you're looking for something quick to help you out, go to these cheat sheets. They're great. Um, for instance, the PHP one. If you click on it here. Um, he gives you two different versions, the PDF or the PNG. If you're going to print, I definitely uh, recommend you get the uh, PDF version. Let's go ahead and open this up and just take a look really quick. And it's just a great, uh, I mean, as it, as it says, cheat sheet. Um, actually, all those uh, codes I was talking about, I could find here. Um, and it's just some common functions and codes and such. So let's close this and let's take a look at another one. Um, uh, the MySQL cheat sheet is just as good and it's very similar. A um, bunch of functions and, and codes. So I won't show you that one. CSS, this is a really great one to have around. If you're going to download any of them, uh, I would download this one. He does a great job here of just going through um, the selectors, the pseudo selectors and classes, um, different size. Um, he even goes as far as to explain the box model. Uh, so if you don't know or if you have trouble uh, understanding getting your head wrapped around the differences between margins and paddings and such, this is an amazing reference here so definitely definitely check this one out 